The route is something that I've been looking at for a number of years because I've spent a lot of time out here. And so I wanted to climb this tower and access it via bikes and pack rafts. It's called the Pinnacle, but it's super, super far in there, hard to get to. It just made sense to, uh, to get flown in with all the stuff. I've now done quite a few trips with Adam. Totally count on them, and especially in climbing situations like the climbing that we're doing out there, like you don't get a second chance if you screw up. So you choose your partners wisely. Our pilot took off, and we waved our goodbyes. Then we rode off into the darkness looking for our first camp. And lo and behold, there's two sets of fat tire tracks. I think we have some fat bike tracks right here. We ride another 200 feet and boom, headlamp pointing at us. And they can only be two people, my friends, Mike and Jenny. Jenny's ecstatic. <laughs> and <laughs> we roll in, we stoke the campfire up. Mike's jibbing me about like, oh, you didn't, you didn't want us to get the first descent of this canyon, you know? So you had to come out, you had to fly in, right? Hey, we can't go do his tower thing. I've been putting up I a good. Time. Yeah, right. <laughs> we got an extra harness if you want to tag along. Do you have any depends? <laughs> <laughs> Running into friends like that is always pretty cool. Oh. Waking up at, uh, at Camp One the next morning, uh, perfect weather, everything looked really good. And from there, we took the bikes down Canyon further. And after about a mile or two, the uh, pinnacle or the towers that we wanted to climb came into view. And when you get a first view of them, you, you know, you're taken aback. Touch him this way. Almost in the ditch, no shoes or wheels to switch. Adam got to do a lap on this thing. It's, it's as good as it looked, and the sun was going down, putting the headlamps on, and still needing to do this like hour and a half, like backtrack back to our camp. Gives me such satisfaction to listen to him brag when I know the sad truth about his romantic Ooh. life. J22. On these mountain roads. We spent a lot of time uh, in the Narrows, as I knew we would. You're in these narrows that are uh, 100 foot cliffs, you know, and, uh, and it's narrow at times, and almost, almost tunnel and subterranean feeling. Um, in fact, very subterranean feeling. After riding through there, you just break out into this huge open expanse and the Dirty Devil River comes through and there's huge sandbars. Great sandy riding, perfect fat bikes, and takes you right to the Dirty Devil. kick back a little bit and just watch these walls go by you as you slowly and you know smoothly work your way down the canyon. It's a very, very different experience. You get on the boat and you're just traveling through. You're, you're more part of it, you know. It's, it's very different and, uh, and it's really cool to combine the two. <laughs> there was some serious relief when we finally made the takeout. We had no light left. There was two minutes left of paddling without headlamps. Dawn broke, and so all we had to do was climb up this road, 16 miles. It's kind of nice to look back and just look at your buddy and chit chat while you're riding and, and talk about what you've done and, you know, and be pretty excited that you accomplished what you set out to do. You can go ride your bike and have fun, but also have an adventure at the same time. 
there's an objective. Yeah, we're in Climate Pinnacle. Yeah, we're in a pack raft, the Dirty Devil. But you're also getting little snippets of what's up these other canyons, and and they give you these ideas of new trips that you want to do. I mean, I mean, the next idea is already in my head.